Hi, I'm Rosie. I'm Digital Marketing Officer at Museums Worcestershire, and today I'm going to be taking you through some social media and digital marketing basics. So this video will be most helpful to those of you who are just getting started, or to those of you who just want a refresh of the basics, though hopefully there'll be some useful tips and tricks for those of you who have some experience already too. Often people think of digital marketing as just having a Facebook page or a website, but digital marketing is an umbrella term and it includes any digital communications or experiences that you're giving your followers or your customers. If you search for a definition of digital marketing, you might feel slightly boggled. And it is true that with unlimited time and budget, you can use some complex tools to work on a really detailed level with digital. However, for the purposes of this video, I'll just be focusing on the main tools that you can use if you're quite short on time and budget. I'm not going to talk about all of these that you see on the screen here, but it is good to be aware of the main tools and concepts and perhaps set some time aside to look into the ones that you're not so familiar with. They might not all be right for your organisation, but they are worth exploring to find out. So starting with your website, it's probably still one of the key places on the internet that your audiences will be looking for you and finding you. It's really good practice to regularly audit your website and any other online platforms to consider the following things. So starting with design, this can be the attractiveness of your website, um, but it can also relate to it being mobile friendly so that it works on various devices, making it easy to navigate so that people can find what they're looking for and making sure that it's accessible for as many people as possible. There's plenty of guidance online about making your website accessible and I'll include some useful links to those at the end. So next, SEO. This stands for Search Engine Optimization, um, which sounds quite complicated, but it simply means making your website more likely to appear on search engines so that you're discovered by more people who are looking for your type of organization or your type of content. This is quite a big topic and you can really um, dive deep into it if you want to. Some companies spend millions every year on just SEO. But there's some simple starting points that you can do for free, which includes making sure that your web pages feature keywords that people might use in the search box to look for you. If your hosting platform allows it, you can also add metadata. This is basically just the name for the description text that you see beneath search results. If you're using WordPress or similar, there are plugins as well, which can help you with your SEO, such as Yoast. It's really good to do regular housekeeping on your website too. So this can include weeding out any broken links, making sure that plugins are working properly, and just that information is accurate and up to date on a regular basis. So the final point is analytics. Some web platforms have this built in already, um, but you can use external tools such as Google Analytics. There is a free version of this, um, but you do need to set it up yourself, so it's worth looking into how you do that. It can be really useful to know how people are browsing your site. So things like what pages are most popular, how people are discovering you, where they're coming from, how long people are staying on, on your website and browsing through certain pages can be really useful information to have. So if you're looking to expand your digital or social media presence, it is always worth using a channel for a little while to see how other organisations are using it and what's most interesting on that app or site to you as a user. So just um, while you're using the app, have a, a think about what kind of posts you're finding eye-catching, what features are working well and what could be relevant to your work. Most social media channels like Instagram and YouTube are free to download as an app on a smartphone or you can use a lot of them on a web browser as well. So it is really easy to experiment and familiarise yourself with how a platform works before posting content yourself. So when you've decided what platforms you'll be using, you'll start to think about filling your channels with content. So first you want to decide on your topics and what kind of content you're actually going to be putting out there. So have a think about what people are looking for when they access your page. Are they looking for the latest news and projects or announcements? You could feature your collections, could do behind the scenes with curators or experts. Do people want to learn or be inspired or be entertained? You might not actually know this yet, or it might end up being a combination of these things. 
So your posts might range from information about your events, can be inspirational quotes, top tips for your followers, interviews, competitions, just to name a few types of content. So brand consistency. You want to marry up the in-person experience that people are having with your organisation with the online experience to some extent. So what messages or values can you incorporate in your online presence to give a consistent brand? For example, if your organisation is considered family friendly, you want to continue that tone throughout your channels. You might also want to incorporate a colour scheme into your images uh, that matches your branding or your logos, or actually add in these things to the ends of your posts or videos. Then we've got tone. So posts which tap into an emotional response can be particularly effective. So this might be um, inspiring somebody to care about a cause or drumming up some excitement about an announcement or an event. You can be far more engaging and conversational on social media than on your website. And you might want to consider using emojis in your posts or using a more humorous tone if it is appropriate. Bear in mind that this isn't going to be suitable for every single post, but it does show the human and relatable side of your organisation a little bit more. A really important point that doesn't get talked about enough, I think, is format. So consider the size of images, the length of text and what types of content will be successful. Um, it really varies between platforms as people do use them for different reasons. Instagram is very visual. Um, Twitter is more about short, snappy text. That said, it is good to try and include pictures in your posts if possible. And also videos or GIFs are known to be the most engaging format because they are moving and they are eye-catching. However, putting video clips together can be quite time-consuming. So if you can't commit to producing videos just yet, it is good to start developing um, an image bank which your team can access. So that can be events pictures, general images of your buildings or collections, uh, images of different seasons. This is a gradual process and it will take some time, but it will also save time in the future and make finding the perfect image a lot easier as time goes on. You also want to think about orientation of images and aspect ratio. Take a little bit of time to familiarise yourself with the image ratio and orientation, either landscape or portrait, which works best for each platform. It should be fairly straightforward if you're just using that uh, platform as a user. So Instagram, for instance, especially on stories, Instagram TV and Reels, and TikTok favour portrait orientation, whereas Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube and Twitter tend to favour landscape. It's also worth knowing that you can use the Windows desktop paint tool to resize images if you need to, and there will be some videos probably on YouTube that you can find about how to do this. It's quite simple. So do use hashtags um, to get noticed and to join local or topic specific posts and uh, topics on Twitter particularly and on Instagram. This is a chance to show your story and content with new audiences and get a bit of a buzz going or kind of ride on the coattails of a buzz that's already happening. It can be quite targeted as well to the type of person who follow and use this hashtag. So in this case here, you can see a Worcestershire Hour tweet. This is local people who live in Worcestershire or businesses in the local area. There are also a range of hashtags though that are used nationally and internationally that focus on specific topics or days. Um, some examples that might be relevant to you are hashtag curator battle, hashtag half term, or hashtag Monday motivation, which happens on a weekly basis. So you wanna get the conversation going and also keep the conversation going. So do tag other relevant organizations who you have a relationship with. Um, and I can't stress the word relevant enough so this might be your funders, it could be partner organisations, friend organisations that are also in your local area, or people that you're actually posting about. Do make sure that it's relevant and specific. Avoid tagging organisations repeatedly in things which aren't relevant to them. Um, but this can help you get noticed in the local area and it can also um, start a bit of a conversation going with other organisations. So asking your followers questions can encourage comments and responses as well. Remember that the beauty of these platforms is that they allow interaction with your followers. 
through comments, shares and likes. So make sure to reply to people who mention you or comment on your posts. It does really break down the barriers between you and your followers. Um, and it does make them feel like they know you a little bit and that your organisation has a personality and that you're approachable. So using calls to action can be really effective, but you do want to make them meaningful. So if you simply add in like this post and follow us to the end of every post, it can come across as a little bit spammy. Um, but rather than doing that, you want to give the person looking at your post a compelling reason to take action. You can find out more about getting the messaging right on our marketing planning video in this series. And I just want to mention um, paid versions of posting as well. So if you do have a marketing budget, taking out Facebook ads can be one of the most effective ways to spend it in a digital forum. You can either design a bespoke advert in Facebook or to start off with, it is easier and quicker to simply click the boost button on an existing post. So you can set a budget, you can set how long the ad will run, you decide who sees your advert in their timeline, and you can also monitor how it's doing along the way. So I'll list some useful places where you can learn more about Facebook advertising at the end. Now I'm just going to do a bit of a quick fire run through some social media top tips that I can show you, which might save you a bit of time. I am only going to be signposting to these things, so some further research might be needed, but they are really useful to know about. The first is scheduling posts. Um, you might be aware that you can schedule posts within Facebook, but you can also use the Hootsuite tool, which is an external platform, and it allows you to post on multiple channels, and it just means that you don't have to be live posting all the time. You can plan in advance and make sure that you get a good coverage on days that you might not be in the office or might not be working. Then we've got the invite to like button on Facebook. So this is really useful and I'm not sure whether many people know about it actually. Um, when people like your posts or interact with your posts, you can click on the uh, link which shows you who's liked it and if they're not already following your page, you can invite them to like your page and it just sends them a little notification saying, you've interacted with Museums Worcestershire's post, would you like to follow them? This can be a really quick and easy way to build up your following list. The final top tip is um, getting Instagram links. So anybody who is on Instagram might realise that it's really uh, difficult to post links and you can't actually do that in specific posts. You might have seen posts that say link in bio um, and it can be really exhausting to be changing your bio link with every single post that you put out there. So if you do want to create um, one place where there are multiple links, you can try Linktree for free. There are other versions of this app as well, so you can explore different options which might suit you better. But it just means that when people click on your link in your bio, they come to multiple links and they can check out all your different channels um, as well as the link to whatever you're talking about in your most recent post. Next, I'm just going to talk about email marketing. So sending out a newsletter via email can be a really powerful way to connect with people who are particularly interested in your work. And there are a few advantages of using email over social media. It's more personal, so the message goes direct to the person and there is less competition in an email inbox than there is in a social media feed. Email allows for longer and more detailed content and messaging as well. So you can include various different stories and updates and links whereas you can't really do that in your average social media post. You can also split your audience into different groups or segments, which can be really useful. So you can split this by their interests, their relationship to the organisation, and you can see um, an example here of an email sent to a VIP list. Or it could be where they signed up to your mailing list. You can manage this process yourself, or you can use a platform so MailChimp is one of the most commonly used email marketing tools. It's free up to 2,000 contacts and it allows you to design a professional looking email which is all formatted correctly with attractive colours as well. It's worth flagging up um, to remember to consider data protection when you're starting to gather and manage people's email addresses 
and the law did change. The GDPR rule came in in 2018, so it is worth having a bit of a look into that. So then we've got tying it all together. You can use each platform to encourage people to buy tickets to an event or to visit you, but it is also good to occasionally signpost to your other channels. For instance, if you want to sign up to the mailing list, follow you on Twitter, or visiting your YouTube channel from other platforms. Creating links across your platforms creates a fuller digital presence with a more consistent opportunity to connect with your followers. And hopefully it'll generate more loyal followers who engage with you across different platforms. For instance, if you have a good news story or exciting new project, sharing it across your channels gives you the best chance of that story making an impression on someone who follows you. It's also quite good for SEO if there are links to your website from various different places. Google and other search engines recognise this as proof that your website is reputable and full of good content because it's been linked to from different places. So finally, I'd just like to encourage you to keep experimenting and evaluating as you go to see what works best for your organisation. Facebook and Twitter have quite good analytics dashboards. Facebook's is much more complex um, than Twitter's. Twitter's is a little bit more basic, but they're both really useful to check regularly and see how your channels are doing and what posts are most successful. MailChimp too has stats on how many people have opened your email and clicked links. There are also tools like Bitly, where you can create a custom link and it tracks how many people click on it. So this can be really useful for seeing where people are accessing a certain web page from and how effective your calls to action are in specific posts. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has been interesting and useful for you. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, please do drop your questions in the comment section below. This has been a Museums Worcestershire production in partnership with Historic England.